New York City, the most diverse city in the world and the most populous in the United States. New York can be described with a lot of words, but boring is not one of them. Anarchists, people from the middle and upper class who act like they're homeless. But seriously, I think a lot more people in the United States have anarchist beliefs than they would like to admit. With a culture of promoting individualism and thinking critically about mass media, government, and large corporations. So who has our back when there are so few people left in this world we can trust? So let me and Stickers tell you about cheap shit, free shit, punk shit, and real shit, and how to stay out of shit. Not the city for tourists, not the city for transplants, but the city for real people. And who better to tell you than someone who's lived in Brooklyn for the past quarter century and actively explores the city multiple days out of the week. I can't tell you everything I know, but I can give you some pointers to maximize the value of your time here. You gotta live like a roach, you know? If you're gonna survive, you're gonna be poor here. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes you're gonna be taken second hand. You know, like, there's always good dumpster spots, you know, CVS and stuff, and, you know, government assistance and stuff, but you just get by and, you know, things come your way. There's always the opportunities of squatting, getting yourself in tune with the community who's familiar with squatting, doing your research on tenant rights, you know? establishing whether or not your your landlord is fucking you over. You can go on the rounds of rent strike, save lots of money on rent. Oftentimes, landlords will pay you to leave because you become a financial burden. So definitely, when it comes to living with rent, there's ways to cheat the system. You know, you could squat places, get a friend who has an extra room, you know. Um, Unfortunately, going the route of getting your own apartment as a poor person, queer person, an artist, you know, whether, just however it be when you're living in poverty, it's tough. So I think ultimately hooking up with your community resources and local um, community gatherings is a good route for saving money on rent. A quick primer. One great thing about New York is its diversity, with more languages and cuisines here than anywhere else on the planet. This stemmed from the old Amsterdam mercantile system, where everybody traded and had to tolerate each other to make as much money as possible. That led to a wide range of food, cultural events, and people in general. One problem with the city is that there's so much to do that you end up paralyzed by your options and ultimately decide on staying in and doing nothing. But here are some of my favorite activities that consistently provide me with a good time. Walk. Seriously, walking is a great way to notice the little details of what's going on around the city, with people everywhere leaving little art projects, unique people you should probably avoid talking to for the sake of their sanity and yours, interesting storefronts. It's really a big choose-your-own-adventure out here. Since the cliffs on the island of Manhattan got dynamite blasted and divided into grids, Walking has never been easier, and it's one of the best cities in the U.S. to walk. Bike around. With hundreds of miles of bike trails all around the city and a bike share program with hundreds of stations, another great way to see the sights. Join the friendly bike community of New York City. Pay attention! Hey! Pay attention! Sidewalk's over there! Pay attention! Oh, what are you, idiot? You fuck off! You fuck off! Bicycles are expensive, but bicycles will definitely save your ass, um, you know, when it comes to hanging out in the city all day, you know, like taking the subway, 
gets expensive, you know, you gotta hop at least six times in a day. So having a bicycle, you know, skateboard, scooter, so be it. But also, obviously, number one is taking public transit. The bus system is comprehensive, as well as the transit system. You don't really need a fucking car. Bar hopping. There are tons of places to justify binge drinking in the city, from rooftop lounges and speakeasies with $20 cocktails, to pubs and dives with well drinks under 5 bucks, and sometimes $1 to $2 beer nights. Do your research on where you're going if price is a factor. I've compiled a list of every bar I can remember spending time in, over 200 by now, and I would say I didn't even have alcohol in a pretty significant chunk of them. Head to Lower East Side and Williamsburg for the dive bar scene, Bushwick and East Williamsburg for the clubs, Manhattan and downtown for the lounges with unjustifiable prices, Queens for the homey neighborhood pubs, and the Bronx for drinking in public like a nuisance. Spot graffiti. The best will be seen from the windows of elevated train lines while walking across bridges and North Brooklyn and Lower Manhattan. You can find good stuff elsewhere too, but the batting average is certainly lower. Punk shit. Check out the Museum of Reclaimed Urban Space, or hang out on St. Mark's and Tompkins Square Park and listen to old heads and drug addicts complain about how things are so much worse now. Uh, my mom brought me here in hopes that I could have a better life as a queer person, and now more than ever, I understand that decision. So, you know, what keeps me here is that I'm welcome here, you know, I have my life, my whole life is here, I don't have a life anywhere else. You know, I've never been able to be who I am in my life. So for me, you know, being able to embrace my true self is, is a true pleasure. The things that I hate are are the people who gentrify it. There's people who come here because they want to fantasize. You know, they want to live here because they want to live in some fake fucking weird sex in the city romance. And that and that's that harms everybody. That harms the people who are trying to migrate and build a new life. And that hurt, hurts the people who have lived here, lived here their whole life, you know? It's people come here in this most selfish way and they try to make the city something it's not. They try to shape it into something it will never be. As far as places to avoid, I stay far away from Midtown Manhattan, between about 14th and 59th streets, and the Financial District. Times Square is fun if you love monuments to capitalism whose LED bulbs will burn your eyes. The non-natives living in Manhattan and Bushwick are mostly trust fund babies and probably not interesting to you as a punk, although some of them are only here because nowhere else would put up with their impractical leftist bullshit, but they are friendly. Don't worry, most of them will have the spirit and optimism beaten forcefully out of them over the next few years, and then they'll go to the suburbs because they thought New York was too dangerous. Deep Queens and Staten Island are a bit too conservative and suburban for my taste, the last parts of real New York that houses its true character that are still hanging on are in South Brooklyn, Western Queens, and <sighs> the Bronx. That's wild, please. Get all that. Manhattan is the spot to be for making and spending money. Washington Square Park is a prime busking spot that probably has already been taken by someone better than you. Subway trains can be good too if your timing is good. It's only a few minutes between stations, so play your best song and then come around to people with a hat or bucket. Put on a good show. You have to get the attention of those who have seen it all. Simply asking for spare change is likely not going to work well. The last person had a story way sadder than yours five seconds ago. I recommend performing so that people feel like they're getting something. Jobs are abundant here, but it may not be what you want in terms of description, hours, pay, or management, but I would say that's a world struggle and not a uniquely New York thing. Still, with the $15 an hour minimum wage, you should do pretty well if you can avoid paying too much in rent. Retail and food industries are always hiring because the turnover rate is so high. The farther you are from high income areas, the less expensive goods should be. Public transit is abundant with almost 500 stations, the most in the world. While I think the weekly unlimited card of about 31-ish dollars is a good deal, you came looking for free stuff, didn't you? Ask people leaving if they have a swipe or make a swiping motion with your hands. They can let you in at no cost to them if they have an unlimited card, 
and most people are happy to pay it forward. If you choose to hop a turnstile or go through an emergency door, be careful. The fine is $100 if you get caught, so don't do it at a busy express station or while cops are posted up. And the mayor's been cracking down. The mayor is my biggest concern, now more than ever. With the police dogs, I mean, we've all seen that one episode of Black Mirror. Like, the Blasio fucking sucked, but he didn't do shit. And that's better than, like, what's happening now. Like, now it's, he's doing things. Like, he's doing things that harm communities every day. You know, he's, and it's called the snitch bot. The New York Post called that. I thought that's the most funniest thing. But he's just, he's enforcing the police that in 2020, we rallied so hard against. And he just, that, all that, all that progress, that, superficial progress is just gone and now what's really making the city unsafe is just the police now it's it's bad whether it's the current state of the police um in harlem um or it's just the complete neglect that police officers are now having in the city it's it's gotten bad like they, they become very aggressive and hostile and just not civil human beings and it's it's worse because they know that they have a mayor who will have their back whenever that shit goes whenever shit hits the fan new york city is known for its civil unrest and fuckery i mean the fuckery dates back to the 80s but it dates back to the newsy days in the 20s and it dates back new york has always been a very rebellious city in a way it's always known for its mischief it's the people who make it you know, it's just, you can't find people anywhere else the way you find it here. And something that differentiated from where I lived in a city in Dallas and from here in New York City is simply the people. You know, the buildings exist, but what shapes those buildings and their character is the people. Who can live in New York City anymore? A lot of people complain about crime and homelessness without understanding that the price of living here is the root cause of those things. The rent here is insane, leading to more wealthy people moving in and homogenizing the culture, and others being priced out and the people barely making ends here are angry. And tell me who their logical targets are, but the companies underpaying them or the individuals they see as pricing them out. So come with a degree of humility if you want to experience or live in the neighborhood, and if it gets too spicy for you, there's always the suburbs. full car painted and I saw someone surfing the subway in the snow. Oh wow. Yeah, I was looking out my window and I was like, yeah, oh. <laughs>